quand tu es jeune, on te demande qu'est-ce que tu veux faire, euh, mais avant de savoir qu'est-ce que je veux faire, moi j'aimerais bien savoir où j'ai envie d'être. At only 24 years old, Guérec Soudé is aboard a 30-foot boat sailing around the world completely on his own. Donc moi ça c'était vraiment un rêve depuis tout petit de faire ce, ce tour du monde. Enfin vraiment qui n'a pas, qui ne rêve pas de voyager comme ça, de faire plein de pays, de, de rencontrer plein de personnes. Et ouais j'aime ça. J'ai quand même accumulé quelques milles en distance. C'est entre 15 et 20 milles. He left his home in France two and a half years ago to begin his journey. J'ai arrivé d'abord en Espagne, après j'ai fait le Portugal, j'ai longé les côtes africaines, et là je suis arrivé aux Caraïbes, puis après je suis arrivé au Groenland où je suis resté un an, puis après j'ai fait ce qu'on appelle le passage du Nord-Ouest, donc pour partir de l'Atlantique, euh, pour arriver dans le Pacifique, par le, euh, par le nord des, de l'Amérique en fait. Alors le voyage il va se terminer quand on sera de retour en France. Je suis un peu particulier dans le sens où j'ai beaucoup d'amis, mais j'aime beaucoup me retrouver seul. Bah, d'être tout seul, euh, bah c'est génial quoi, c'est vraiment super. Although he's been navigating alone, he's found an unlikely companion. Je suis quand même accompagné de Monique. Je rêvais d'avoir une poule avant même d'avoir mon bateau. Donc je m'étais renseigné auprès d'experts en France, on m'avait dit impossible, si elle est stressée, elle ne peut pas pondre. Monique, j'ai trouvé au Canary et premier jour sur le bateau, Momo m'a fait un œuf et en, en 28 jours, elle en a pondu 25. Donc euh, autant dire qu'elle est plutôt à l'aise quoi. Bah, avec Monique, nous on est, on est curieux et on voulait savoir comment ça se passe pour avoir notre propre avis. J'aime bien euh, en fait me retrouver dans des situations un petit peu critiques et compter que sur moi et c'est vraiment très intéressant. Cet hivernage quand t'es pris dans les glaces, tu te demandes ce que tu fais là quoi, vraiment. T'as qu'une envie, c'est qu'on vienne te chercher. Il y a même des moments, mais moi je, je, je donnerai mon bateau, je payerai toute ma vie pour qu'on me sorte de là. Quoi. Et après le lendemain, eh ben, le soleil est de retour, le vent s'est calmé, Monique a pondu un œuf et la vie recommence. Quoi. When I go to compete, I realize there's not a lot of people who look like me. There is an opportunity here to encourage and teach people how to sail. My name is Amy Sinclair. I'm a sailor and I'm trying to open up sailing so that it's a more diverse sport. I got into sailing four years ago. I had a moment where I was just really unhappy and the idea that I was able to come out every Wednesday night and sail with my teammates was like my one place of like happiness. And I loved that. It saved me when I was in a really dark place. The team that I race with now is called Sweet Caroline. I love my teammates, they're my family. Half the team is women. We represent eight different countries, from Morocco to Peru, Jamaica to Colombia and India. But when I would go to compete, I'd realize we're the only team that looks like us. Dave, can you put this in the locker? One of the things that I wanted to do is start a collective channel called Sailing Noir, an Instagram account, so that I can get the word out about it and encourage more people to join. It wound up taking off. A lot of people started following and reaching out, asking how they could learn. I realized that there is an opportunity here to encourage and teach people how to sail. So then I started traveling. Hi, so my name is Amy. I am a competitive sailor. From I would put together different groups of people and we would go out and we would sail for a couple days. More recently, I went to Kenya I put together the first ever women's sailing team, and it was amazing. First all-female sailing, sailing team, team. competing. One, two, two three. Yay! I decided we're going to start a women's team, we're going to join this race, and we're going to show these girls that they can do this and help these girls feel like they were empowered to learn something new. 
It was probably one of the most amazing things I've ever experienced in my life. There were all these women from this community who never come out, don't participate in sailing or boating, which is two of the biggest drivers of the economy on that island. We changed the way a whole community thinks about women's role in society. I think sailing should be more inclusive and diverse because it's such a loss that other people don't get to experience the same thing that I do. They're just not used to seeing us, so we gotta fix that. I would say try something new, don't be afraid. You will surprise yourself when you realize you can do it, and that feeling, you can't put a price on that. Imagine you're a sailor, working on a Great Lakes freighter for two months at a time, and you need your mail delivered. Well, that's where we come in. My name is Jim Hogan, and I'm the owner and the fourth generation of the J.W. Westcott Company. This company was started in 1874 by my great-grandfather, Captain John Ward Westcott. We operate a shore-to-ship and ship-to-shore delivery boat in the port of Detroit. We're the only floating zip code in actually the United States, and it still holds true today. Any package that's got that 48222 zip code is going to arrive here at our station. On any given day, we receive the mail and packages in the morning. You see the various pigeonholes, as they were called. Each of those represent different ships. We place mail in those slots, and we wait until the vessel is actually coming through the port of Detroit. Hey, Dorothy Ann, how you doing today? Pretty good, how about yourself? Uh, not too bad, just getting finished up here. Okay, real good. We'll see you in a little bit. We pack the mail bags. The captain takes the vessel away from our dock, and off to midstream we go. We deliver mail by the pail, and that's the sailor's mailbox, if you will. The crewmen aboard the ship will lower down a bucket, and we'll fill the bucket with the mail. And then we send the bucket back up. Sometimes we're delivering passengers, crew. We had a grocery order a number of years ago. The last item was about three and a half feet long, and I looked at it, and it was a tuna, a whole tuna. We end the delivery with a salute. We head back to the dock, we wait for our next adventure. I've worked here for 43 years. I'm grateful to have been a part of all of this, and I look forward to a fifth generation taking this on and uh, seeing where it goes, up or down the river, as it were. You get mixed emotions when you're out there hunting the lionfish. A feeling of accomplishment because you're actually making a difference. A feeling of competitiveness because of the fact that, in my case, I'm trying to be Florida's lionfish king. Lionfish are a non-native species to the Atlantic, the Gulf, and the Caribbean. Because they reproduce at such a high rate and have zero predators, they are currently taking over the waters here. Lionfish eat basically everything that we eat, which includes crabs, lobsters, grouper, flounder, anything you name it, they're game. The scary part is, is that we don't know how many of them are out there and it's probably a lot bigger than we ever will know because of the fact that we always dive the public spots or the private fishermen spots. But, I mean, the ocean is huge. The Lionfish Challenge is a contest set up for those of us that are making a difference to go out and kill as many lionfish as we can over the next four months. Not every person is a big fan of spearfishing, but the problem that we have with the lionfish, these things need to be eliminated, every one of them. And whether you're a big fan of it or not, this is just not about spearfishing, it's about taking care of our ecosystem and making sure that everything stays balanced. Being crowned the Lionfish King would, will be a huge accomplishment, but it's not just about that. 
the next weekend I'll probably go out and do the same thing again even though the competition is over.